What does it mean for God to be the great I am? Welcome to Pastor's Point, I'm Jamie Schmitz. Today's program addresses this question as Pastor Adam Just from Washington Church in Toledo, Ohio shares his message entitled, Jesus the I Am. Hi, one of the things that I love and I've grown up loving are crescendos in music. A crescendo uh, in music is a musical term to describe the movement of music. It often happens when you start really soft in music and then, especially in movies, uh, in a tenacious part of, of, of music or a moving part of the movie, that the music grows louder and louder and louder and louder and gets larger and larger until finally it gets to a point where something big happens uh, in the movie. One of my favorite composers uh, of, of movies is a guy named John Williams. And I remember one of my first ever CDs, a compact disc that I had was of his soundtracks. And it would have the uh, theme songs of Superman and Star Wars, E.T., Indiana Jones, and of course, Jaws. Uh, these soundtracks had, were full of crescendos. And at the moment of this tension, when Indiana Jones would be just about ready to be free of the Nazis or get the prized artifact, or when E.T. would be soaring with Elliot uh, across the sky, over the police car, past the moon, you would have uh, that moment of loud crescendo or everyone's favorite, very tenacious uh, jaws. You have this small sound, da-da, 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 and they would keep growing and growing and growing until finally the jaws would, this giant shark would, uh, of course, in a movie, uh, attack and, and, and eat, uh, eat someone. So these crescendos tell us and display a story. Now, in our scripture that we have today, is from John chapter 8. And in John's gospel, Jesus describes himself many times with I am statements. He says things like, I am the bread of life. I am the fountain of life. I am the gate. I am the shepherd. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection uh, and the life. Well, this morning uh, or today in uh, John, chapter, John chapter 8, this is a crescendo where he's in a discussion, kind of argument with a group of people, a group of religious leaders, and this continues to grow and grow and grow until finally at the end he says this huge statement that he is just the I am. And so join me as we look at John chapter 8, and we'll walk through and see and follow this crescendo from uh, its beginning uh, to, to its end. So we'll be looking at John chapter 8, verses 50, 21 through 59. And I will be reading out of the New Living uh, Translation uh, today. Starting in verse 21, it says, Later Jesus said to them again. Now, Jesus says this at this point, and most of the times in John's Gospel, Jesus is interacting or doing miracles or teaching uh, it all correlates with a Jewish feast or a Jewish festival. So earlier in chapter 6 and chapter 7, Jesus just gets done attending the festival of the tabernacles, the reminding when the Jewish people were out in the wilderness and God provided shelter for them. So they just got done having these booths, these tabernacles, these shelters. And then Jesus continues to be in Jerusalem and he is going around talking to people and, and teaching people and having interactions. And so this is another one of these interactions that he has with a group of people in the temple. So verse 21, he says to them, I'm going away. You will search for me, but will die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. The people asked, is he planning on committed suicide, or what does he mean? You cannot come where I'm going. Now, for us, 2,000 years later, we have a good understanding of what he's talking about. We know that Jesus isn't from here. He has going, and he's come from heaven, and he returns to heaven. But they didn't quite understand that. They don't have that perspective as, as we do. 
So Jesus continues in this crescendo as this builds. In verse 23, he says, You are from below. I am from above. You belong to this world. I do not. That is why I said that you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am who I claim to be. You will die in your sins. So he's telling them, you have to believe. One of our responses of Christians is to respond and believe in who Jesus is. Earlier in John chapter 4, he's talking with the woman at the well. And he says that he is, I am the Messiah. He is the Christ. And we need to uh, respond to that, uh, his invitation of belief. And so that's what he's telling them again. If you don't respond, then you will die in your sin. That's one of our important messages as Christians, as Christ followers, is to share this message. Because we don't want our other uh, loved ones, our family, our friends, our strangers that we meet, we don't want them to die in their sins. We want them to have this same eternal life that we, are, uh, we know to be promised to us through Christ. But this still leaves a question for them. And as this crescendo grows, they ask this first question. Well, who are you? Who do you claim to be? If we're supposed to believe in you and this claim that you have, well, who is that? Who do you claim to be? And Jesus replied to that question. He said, the one I have always claimed to be. I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but I won't. For I say only what I have heard from the one who sent me. We know that's the Father. The Father has sent him. And he is completely truthful. But they still didn't understand what he was, that he was talking about, the Father. Verse 28, Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. I do nothing on my own, but only say what the Father taught me. Hear that lifting up on the cross, this has shades of John chapter 3, when Jesus had that nighttime conversation with Nicodemus, when he told them, when he told Nicodemus that he had to be lifted up on the cross. Verse 29, and the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do what pleases him. So Jesus answers that question about who he claims to be, that he claims to be the one that's going to be lifted up on a cross. Then verse 30, we have that response of people. It says, Then many who heard him say these things believed in him. This reaction, this response to this invitation is that people believe and start beginning to put their trust in who Jesus claims to be. He continues to talk to them. Verse 31, he says, Jesus, you said, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so as this crescendo continues to grow, well, you have to believe. And then some believed. And Jesus says, now that you believe, now you have to truly live and obey these teachings. And when you know and believe these, this truth of these teachings, you will be set free. But there's still a question. There's still a response that the people have. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? One thing that obviously forget their history of the Israelite people, that they were slaves for 400 years uh, in Egypt. Somehow they have forgotten that. But they ask him, you calling us slaves? But we, we've never been slaves. So Jesus replied in verse 34, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So he, they say, we're not slaves, but he says, yes, you are slaves. You are slaves to sin. This crescendo continues to grow. There becomes more and more tension here. He says, a slave is not a permanent member of the family, in verse 35, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. I am telling you what I saw when I was with the Father, 
but you are following the advice of your father. Jesus throws another wrench into to, uh, their mindset. Their father, their father was Abraham. Their father was the Lord. But he says, well, you're following the ways of your father that who is uh, uh, the devil. And they, and they say, well, our father is Abraham, they declared. Jesus says, no. Can you imagine being there? You make a claim, our father is Abraham. And Jesus says, well, no, that's, that's, that's not true. For if you were really the children of Abraham, you would follow his example. Instead, you are trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. No, you are imitating your real father. They replied, we aren't Ill illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. Can you see and feel this tension? You're slaves. No, we're not slaves. Yes, you are. You're not following your father. You're following this other father that you have. You're not following the father of Abraham, who actually is your father. Verse 42, Jesus tells them, If God were your father, you would love me, because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I am saying? It's because you can't even hear, for you are the children of your father, the devil. Imagine that tension. All of a sudden, they're claiming to be the children of Abraham. He is their father. And Jesus says, no, your father is the devil. Imagine the, the, the crowd, the people is being so upset. Blood is starting to boil. The crescendo is getting louder and louder and larger and larger. For you love to do the evil things that he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and he is the father of lies. So I tell you the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. But you don't listen because you don't belong to God. Several times we have seen Jesus say, your heart is hard. You're not listening. You're not hearing. And today as followers of Jesus, we have to be sure that our hearts are soft, that our ears are open to the voice of God, to follow his directions, his steps, his teachings that we get from God's word. So in response, Jesus says, no, your father is the devil. Their response back to him is, verse 48, you Samaritan devil. They call him a Samaritan devil. A Samaritan was a person that was kept on the outside. They didn't want to have anything to do. The Jews wanted nothing to do with Samaritans. They were looked down upon. They were almost considered the least of all the people. But that's who uh, Jesus is called, a Samaritan devil. Didn't we say all along that you were possessed by a demon? No, Jesus said, simply, no. I have no demon in me. For I honor my father and you dishonor me. And though I have no wish to glorify myself, God is going to glorify me, for he is the true judge. I tell you the truth. Anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. Wait, what? Never die? Another question that gets raised. The people say, now we know you are possessed by a demon. Not only are you a Samaritan devil, but you're possessed by a demon. Even Abraham and the prophets died. But you say, anyone who obeys my teaching will never die? Again, you and I know, 2,000 years later, 2,000 years removed, we know if we obey the teachings of Jesus that we have our place reserved for us in heaven, the promises of eternal life with Christ. But they didn't know that. They didn't get this whole picture that we do. But they say in verse 53, Are you greater than our father, Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. And they ask him again, Who do you think you are? Remember, we began back here with, who are you? And Jesus would talk with them, tell them who they are. And finally, here at this end, 
this culmination. They said, who do you think you are? Jesus answers in verse 54, if I want glory for myself, it doesn't count. But it is my Father who glorifies me. He said, he is our God, but you don't even know him. I know him. If I said otherwise, I would be as great as a liar as you. But I do know him and obey him. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. And the people said, you aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you have seen Abraham? And this is where Jesus finally gets this dramatic conclusion. He says, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was even born, I am. Before Abraham was even born, I am. And at that po point, verse 59, they picked up stones to throw them at Jesus. And we have an understanding that there was a spot in the temple where the stones were located from when they would have to pick up and they would stone people. So they went to go get their stones and they came back and Jesus he had gone. He had disappeared back into the crowd for he knew it was not his time yet. So what's the big deal? What's this big deal when he says that I am? That's where he leaves it. Well, we understand that if you were Jewish, you would understand and you heard those words and you knew that title, that name only belonged to Yahweh, to the Lord. And that would come exact, uh, directly out of the story of releasing uh, the captives from Egypt with Moses, that God called to Moses out of the burning bush. These are the same words. I'd like to share them with you from Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. God called to Moses out of this burning bush, and Moses came by and, and said, God, what do you need me to do? And, and the Lord said, I need you to go and rescue and deliver my people. But Moses protested. He basically has the same question. Well, who do I tell them? Who are you? Who do I tell them that is sending me? What is your name? So God replied, verse 14, God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent you, has sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to be remembered for all generations. And so the Jews that Jesus was interacting with, they remembered this name, I am. And when they heard that Jesus said this, Immediately, anyone who would make this claim or say this would equate themselves with God. And so they are so upset, so angry to the point of wanting to kill him because this was so blasphemous that they, to say that God was there present right in front of them in the flesh. This moment, Jesus displays the intense totality of, of who he is, the, the name of God present right there in front of them. We hear again from God's word in John chapter 1. This is in the prologue of John's gospel. It says, In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. And God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. When Jesus makes this statement that he is the I am, he is claiming that he is God, which we know. But what we also need to understand is that Jesus was present at creation. Everything exists because of Jesus. Everything was made through him, and Jesus gives life to everything. He is the I am. 
A lot of times when God would reveal himself in the Old Testament, people would fall down, put their faces to the ground because the response of being in the presence of God was so incredible that they would just fall down. At one point at the end of John's gospel, we see this. Jesus is with his disciples and they're in the garden of Gethsemane. And here comes Judas leading this group of soldiers and they're carrying their, their uh, swords and their torches and they come to Jesus. Jesus approaches them and they say, he says, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And at that moment, what's he say? He says, I am he. And at that moment, all of them fall back and put their face on the ground. Those that are coming to arrest him, that is the power of the I am, the power of Jesus. Now for us today, how do we remotely begin to respond to this? This incredible part that Jesus is the I am, that he created everything. That when we talk and pray to God, that we know that at that moment they were in the presence of God, the creator. And I think sometimes we can have a tendency to put God into a small box or go to church and have God in a nice little package where Jesus, you can have rule and reign over this part of our lives. And so what I'd like us to do is to focus a little bit on the fact that Jesus is the creator, the, the, the huge bigness, the totality of God, all the way down to the microscopic level, from the stars down to the ways our, our hands and our eyes and our hearts are held together uh, by him. I'd like to share a few verses with you out of Job. In Job chapter 38, Job is, has offered, uh, made some questions to God. And God responds to them in the same way I think he, this I am might respond to us today. In Job 38, God asks, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to night's wickedness? Can you direct the movement of the stars? Binding the cluster of the Pleiades or loosening the cords of Orion. Can you direct the sequences of the seasons? Do you know the laws of the universe? Can you regulate the earth? Who gives intuition to the heart and instinct to the mind? Who does all these things? It is Jesus, the I am. And so for us today, to be aware of the I am in our lives, the one that made the heavens and the earth is the one that lives within us through the power and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Are we aware of that? How that could drastically and dramatically change our lives? Think about the next time you go and look at your reflection in the mirror. Do you see and understand that this I am, this Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells within us? Do you see that in the person that you come in contact with, your spouse, your family member, your neighbor? Do you realize that the I am, the Almighty, the Creator, could indwell within them when they believe and trust in Jesus Christ? How about our enemy or that person that you don't get along with? Do you believe and understand that the I am can also be within them? I think when we stare at ourselves in the mirror with this truth, it could dramatically change how we view and treat each other. Because Jesus is 
this I am. This I am that wants to set prisoners free, that wants to release slaves from captivity. And as he said, set us free from our sin. So my hope and prayer for all of us is that as we spend time with Jesus, the I am, that we will be set free from our sin, continuing to grow in our faith, and then passing on this love and grace and forgiveness that he gives us, we share and pass that on to others. And so as the crescendo grows, we pray that the crescendo musical blessing of Jesus would grow and grow and grow in our hearts and our soul and our minds. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you for watching Pastor's Point today. If you would like to learn more about the church featured on today's show, feel welcome to connect with them at the following contact information. If this show has been a blessing to you, visit our feedback section on our website at wlmb.com slash pastors point. You will also be able to request a DVD of today's show and find a schedule of pastors for this season's episodes. We are so grateful for your prayers of financial support that make Pastors Point possible. Be sure to tune in next time when another local pastor shares a message from the Word of God right here on Pastors Point.